Are fallen angels and giants making a comeback? Stay tuned to find out. The following is a paid program by Zola Levitt Ministries. Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. Zola Lepp presents. Shalom and welcome to our program. I'm Miles Weiss. And I'm Catherine Weiss and we have a wonderful program for you today. Our guest speaker, Dr. Dennis Lindsay. Yeah, he's written a great new book called Giants, Fallen Angels and the Return of the Nephilim. Giants are making a comeback in the earth and we are in the times of the signs. Mm -hmm. We're seeing these things come to pass on the earth. Dr. Lindsay is the CEO of Christ for the Nations, and we have great friends who are graduates. They've been right. placed by CFN. What a, what a legacy. It's an incredible they, legacy. That they've left yes. not only for their children, but mm. for all children that attend their Bible college. Yes. We see them passionate for the Lord, yes. passionate for Israel, and we are so grateful to have him on our program and talk about this. You know, Miles, I think about David and yes. how he faced a giant, mm. you know, and he overcame that giant because of his trusting in the Word of the Lord. And, you know, it seems like out there, very far out there, but really not. If it's in the Word, yes. then we know that God was speaking to us about that there were giants, not only in the days of Noah, but in David's day and then now in our day. Yeah, it's true. It's interesting because how did we get saved? It was a supernatural act. We serve a God of the supernatural. So, of course, there will be phenomena that we need to look into and need to be explained. I'm so grateful for what Dennis has done with this book because he really grounds it in the scriptures. So let's go to our interview with Dr. Dennis Lindsay. Dennis, thank you for being with us today. Thank you. Yeah. Thank I'm you, just you. thrilled with your new book. I spent this last week reading it. I saw it a while ago, but then this last week I've been reading Giants, Fallen Angels, and the Return of the Nephilim. I don't think people are really prepared for what's coming on the earth. I really want to start by thanking you and your family for the legacy that you've given to the body, especially in Israel. You know, that's our heart here. Tell us about the, the relationship, the parallels between Genesis and Revelation in terms of the things that are coming, the things that are ahead of us. Well, we all know as uh, believers that uh, there's a battle. I mean, all the, you're talking about wars from the beginning of time, and we know the last war is going to be the Armageddon, but yeah. what is leading up to it, and how is the devil, why is he so excited about trying to destroy God after Jesus rose from the dead? Mm -hmm. Something's going on there, and Jesus said, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be just before I return. Well, what was it like in the days of Noah? It was bad, there was violence, there was sin, there was wickedness. Uh, it, was, it was something terrible. No, it was far worse than that. Hmm. And there's a little clue in Genesis chapter 6 that he talks about, and we're seeing that same thing about to happen again. What is it in Genesis 6? He talks about hybrids, the sons of God. Hmm. The traditional view of the church is the sons of God were the good guys and the daughters of men were the bad guys. They intermarried and had giants or had Nephilim. Mm -hmm. uh, if that's true, why didn't that happen today? No, there was something bad going on and Satan was trying to mess up God's whole creation and he's still out to do that and he's about to do the same thing again. And that's what my book is all about to show what was going on back there was so bad that God had to wipe out the entire world both animals and humans, and he's going to have to do it again because something is about to happen and we're being prepared for it. Hollywood, the media is preparing us to receive something. You know, evolution has been rejected by the media, by the, uh, the, the world of academia. Mm -hmm. Why? Well, because it just doesn't work. So how did we get here? They said, well, it has to be from aliens. And of course, the Bible says, those aliens are evil spirits, fallen this is angels. Very important because people are looking for a physical manifestation, an interstellar hardware yes. based manifestation of something that will save us, so called. But you're speaking about an interdimensional, a spiritual manifestation. 
something evil is, a, is coming on the planet of Earth, and, and it's something supernatural. And my book deals with this. Of course, those giants back then, those Nephilim, were involved in some supernatural stuff. The Bible talks about supernatural stuff. Yes. There's no problem. Right. I mean, look at Moses. He throws down a stick and it turns into a snake. Right. How do you do that? And then he picks it up and it turns back into a stick. Mm -hmm. There's all sorts of supernatural things. And then the magicians do the same thing back then. So the supernatural is part of this creation. We know it from a biblical, there's good, there's bad. Yes. And Satan is out to do the bad again. Good picture there because if I remember correctly, Moses' rod swallows up the magician's rod. That's a good so sign. it will be at the end. Exactly. Right? Uh, God wins, we know that. But tell, take us back to Noah for a second. We always hear about Noah as being perfect in character and, and just the model man for the times compared to the rest of the world. But you're speaking about something having to do with genetics. Tell us about that. Yeah. Now, we don't know exactly what happened because Nephilim are before the flood. Mm -hmm. uh, these hybrids, these sons of God, these angelic fallen beings. Traditional churches says, well, they, uh, angels don't have sex. No. Uh, do, can homosexuals have sex? Yes. It's, they, these angels are the fallen angels. Mm. Jesus in the New Testament is talking about the good angels. We will be like the good angels, but Speaking if you're of, bad. Will there be marriage in heaven? Yeah. And he says, we'll be like the angels. We'll be like the angels. So he's talking about good angels, but bad angels will have crossed the boundaries and that's why they can't be saved. Because they fell from they heaven fall. to earth, followed <laughs> yeah. Satan into earth. So this is what we're seeing that is Satan is about to do again. He's crossed the boundaries and he's doing something with hybrids. Sons of God, fallen angels involved with human beings and have Nephilim hybrids. And we're about to see that again. The sons of God, these fallen angels are about to come on planet Earth and the media is preparing us to receive them and they're gonna be involved with hybrids. We are making hybrids right now. We are making flowers, uh, fruit, animals, Plants, we're making hybrids, half this, half that. Jesus says, don't get involved with that. Don't receive the mark of the, of the beast. We are being prepared to receive something terrible on planet Earth, and we need to be careful not to be involved. Satan is a liar and the father of lies, and he's very good at couching things in a positive kind of beneficial package. Some of this research is for medical breakthrough. Absolutely, for wonderful science. Wonderful new things for us all. For benefits of uh, science, and so that's the way he catches it so that we accept it, it's the politically right thing to do, but in the end, the Bible says it's bad. Wow, so what about the, at the time of going back to Noah again, I'm stuck on this because I, I think you said that the, the demonic DNA got on the boat. Yes, and, and, and how did that happen? Well, we don't know because Nephilim is mentioned after when the, when the children of Israel went out and they saw these giants, they came back and said, we're like grasshoppers right. to them. Uh, something there was unusual. How did that happen? We don't know exactly, but could it be? Could it be? In other words, we all have a little DNA of something, like a little strip you go to the market and you pick up food and you have a little barcode. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got the DNA in us. Mm -hmm. uh, so what does Satan have? I don't know exactly what he's got, mm -hmm. but he's got a little strip of uh, DNA something, and he's mixed that, and you can't do it. He's a virus. He looks for a host mm -hmm. in which he can reduplicate himself, and he does that through human beings, good people. So what happened back then? Is it possible that Noah's children's wives were already contaminated mm. and they carried on that contaminated DNA? I don't know. It's a possibility and I mentioned that in the mm -hmm. book, how those, that DNA gets passed on to uh, after the flood. And I appreciate that about the book as well, is that in the midst of all of this very dramatic and um, uh, just fascinating material, you keep going back to the Bible, you keep grounding sure. everything you're teaching in the Bible. And I really appreciate that, and I know our viewers will as well. Uh, so, so as you're speaking, I'm thinking of Hollywood movies and pictures for the last 30 years speaking about this kind of thing happening on the earth. And we're being prepared. We're being set up for this. Absolutely, and, and the giants are a major part. 
Most people know a little bit about these gigantic structures around the world, but they're not aware that they're all over the world and they're starting to be revealed by Facebook and by the media and by internet. I have pictures of everything. I show it to the class. I don't deal with so much about trying to prove that giants were here except this method, mm -hmm. and it's phenomenal. Mm -hmm. When you see all of these structures around the world, how, did they, how were they built? Giants were involved, supernatural was involved. Wow. When we come back, we're going to look at some of those structures, discuss them, and just stay with us. You're in for a wild ride. Our resource this week, the audio CD, Encounters with UFOs. Unidentified flying objects are being sighted, and encounters with extraterrestrial beings are being reported. On this CD, here's Zola Levitt reveal an amazing connection between the rising interest in the occult and the strange phenomena associated with UFOs. Find out more by asking for the audio CD, Encounters with UFOs. We have an unidentified flying object. For insightful perspectives on Israel and Bible prophecy, ask for our free monthly newsletter, The Levitt Letter. At levitt.com you can read the newsletter, watch the TV program, or visit our online store. Stay current with us on social media via Facebook and Twitter. Come with us on a tour of Israel or Petra, or a cruise to Greece and Ephesus. Please contact us for more information. We're back with Dr. Dennis Lindsay, author of Giants, Fallen Angels, and the Return of the Nephilim. This is fascinating. You just were speaking about the evidence around the world in these giant structures and uh, what I saw, uh, structure, uh, sculptures on walls from every culture speaking about this interaction between giants and men. Explain some of that. Well, you know, my passion is creation science, and now it's just the next subject, and talking about giants. And when you go back to look at these ancient structures around the world, they're one of the greatest testimonies that giants live and actually existed, not just because it's in the Bible, but this is evidence. You know, when you talk about the bones and the different reports, those could be misinterpreted. You got Photoshop that can make, do all sorts of things. Mm -hmm. But when you visit these places and you see them, and you only hear about a few of those, but now they're uncovering all around the world. We've heard about Stonehenge in uh, Britain, and, and now we find them everywhere, all the countries. We're talking about South America, S Central America, uh, Russia, China, the Pacific, all over the Pacific Islands. We've heard about, you know, the on uh, Easter Island, these statues. Right. We're talking about almost 900 of these gigantic statues, some of them, most of them buried in the ground. How did they get there? Who did it? Uh, something supernatural was going on in the past, and we're just beginning to uncover these, and their public is seeing these things. And they say these were made by Stone Age type people. Mm -hmm. We're talking about 6,000, 10,000, uh, 20,000 years ago. Uh, There's something r going on back then. But the traditional science and scientific view is that giant rolling logs, enough slaves, uh, block and tackle pulleys, and what do you say? Well, I, I, I like the part with everybody knows about the pyramids in Egypt. Mm -hmm. And the Great Pyramid, they say, took about 20 years, and it has about 1.3 million blocks, each weighing about two and a quarter tons. That means a conservative estimate if uh, to cut, to carry, uh, and put in place one every two minutes. Mm -hmm. And they say even up to one in every 10 seconds. Uh, you have to have a hundred thousand, a million slaves to do that. Nobody agrees how those things are. I don't know how many different w w books I've read and seen mm -hmm. that nobody knows. Mm -hmm. uh, there was something else going on, and I believe there was something demonic going on with Pharaoh and the soothsayers back at the time of Moses. Now we find out there's even a, a Stonehenge type structure in Israel. Oh yeah. When I mentioned that to my sister who's lived in Israel for 45 years, she says, no, there's no such thing. And I showed her a picture. She says, what is this? I said, it's 10 miles from the Sea of Galilee. Hmm. You gotta be kidding. Uh, so I said, look it up on the web. And she did and she came back. What in the world? Mm -hmm. One and a half football fields long and it's 40,000 stones up to 20 tons a piece. Hmm. And they say it was built before the Stonehenge in Britain. And I asked our guide to show us, Could, can you ever heard of this? He says, no, there's no such thing. I said, look at this picture. What is this? 
Uh, I said, go look on the web. He came back, he said, <gasps> What is this? And you actually went there. And we did. The year later, I met another guide who had been up there, and I said, can you take us there? Yes. And we visited it with our group. We were the first tour that ever, and it's only 10 miles. Guess who's from home, according to the Bible? King Og, who had a bed about 12, 13, 14 feet in That's length. Right. 10 miles from his yep. home. So the Jewish scholars, the archaeologists say, this had to be built by giants. I, I feel like we're in the book of Acts where these that have turned the world upside down have come. You're turning the world right side up here because, uh, for example, as a refugee from the New Age, I thought we were evolving into some Nirvana-like state. Oh, uh, yeah. It turned out I was very wrong, and I was a sinner who needed to be saved by grace through Yeshua. And what this speaks of is really almost a devolution from this interaction of a tremendous level of industry to yeah. This nanotechnology, which is very fancy, but doesn't compare to what that was, and now they're going to come together for the purposes of Satan, but thank God ultimately for His purpose. And, and all of this is a why I, I really think my sister j grabbed a hold of this mm -hmm. is because it's pointing to why Israel has been the focus of attention all throughout history, mm -hmm. and it's simply because Satan has been wanting to wipe out Israel because he knows what God has said in mm -hmm. His Word about Israel. Uh, this is my temple, uh, my name will be there forever. Satan knows that. That's why he's got his little squatter's hut up there, the <laughs> Dome of the Rock there. But let me just say, God's going to win. The scripture is very uh, very clear about that. Mm. So that's the whole issue of the book. It points out that the giants were involved in trying to wipe out Israel. They're still trying to wipe out Israel. They were giants back then. Now they're nations around there. Satan does not like Israel. Mm. He wants Israel. He wants to mess up God's plan yes. of creation, His plan for family, and His plan for Israel, and His whole plan of redemption. Mm. He's the great counterfeiter. He is. So, uh, as we near the time of the coming of the Lord, and we see these things coming on the earth, you have some very strong statements about the book of Revelation and some of the things we've read for years. Uh, and now, if we think in terms of hybrids and interspecies messing around, a demonic messing with it, some of those pictures make sense. The, tell us about yes. the horses, tell us about the locusts with the faces of men. Well, those are hybrids apparently and some sort of demonic activity where Satan is going to be involved genetically, biologically, mechanically, making some sort of creatures to destroy God's people, God's whole plan of redemption. And that's why the Lord says, don't have any part of it, stay away from it. Do whatever you can to avoid anything to do with becoming, you know, a little bit of this DNA that will help you, mm -hmm. kind of like cells, uh, uh, stem cell research. It's good for the science and this will help you. And the whole idea of hybrids is to help you to do things that animals can do, like f see better, run faster, lift, be stronger, live longer. Mm -hmm. That's the whole idea of what science and why Satan is going to say, this is good. And the Lord says, stay away from it. Wow. And so, what's your formula for, if there's such a thing, formula for, what's the word for uh, not becoming deceived? Because it says, if the days are not shortened, even the elect would be deceived. Well, I, I'm, I myself, the more you're into the Word, yeah. the more you're going to stay away from the things of the world mm -hmm. that will keep you and draw you into those things. Mm -hmm. And it will give you faith and not cause fear mm -hmm. by what's coming on the world. Yeah. Wow. So, one last question. You spoke about the, the role of Israel, the centrality of Israel. As you know, this program, that's what we're about, the Jews and Gentiles coming together to worship the one true Messiah and the centrality of Israel and its restoration. How can people pray? In fact, why don't you do this? Would you just look directly at the camera and tell our viewers how, how should they be praying right now? Well, I'm convinced, uh, I, even though my passion is creation, because of my dad, who actually heard when the nation of Israel became a nation, I have, the Lord has downloaded something. I have in my DNA something from the Holy Spirit, I don't know what it is, that says if you will bless Israel, your life is going to be blessed. And I just built a prayer room dedicated to Israel on our campus here in Dallas. And you know what? I put the t first $2,000 in it, and as a result of that, someone gave $10,000 the following week, and then someone gave $30,000 uh, a month later. I couldn't believe what that little bitty seed did, mm -hmm. and how the Lord says, if you bless Israel, I will bless you. And I've learned this from my parents, and now I'm putting it to practice, and I'm passing on to the next generation. 
The next generation is the Benjamin generation, and that generation is going to be the one that helps bring back the Messiah. Dr. Lindsay, <laughs> thank you for being here. Hi, you know, a good question to ask yourself might be, where else can you find solid Bible teaching regarding prophecy for these last days? Well, Zola Levitt Ministries has been doing exactly that for more than 35 years and will continue with your support. Your gifts of financial support is what enables us to do this. We want to remind you there's three ways, online, through the mail, or just give us a phone call. And thank you. Israel is a land full of promises. You will never be the same, so we invite you to come. It's a trip of a lifetime. We'd love you to join us. The land of Israel is blooming today and it is alive and we would love to host you there where you can see the covenant promises come alive. Yes, you know, they've been coming alive. That's why Satan has always been after the Jewish people, first to stop Messiah from coming, then to stop us from getting back to the land so he can stop the Jewish presence that will welcome the Messiah, always working to work his pattern in re instead of God's. Right. You know, that battle goes back to the Garden of Eden. Right. It's really the enmity between the seed of the woman and the seed of the serpent. Mm -hmm. We see that playing out today. And in fact, in, in Dr. Lindsay's book, this whole counterfeit right. is in order to keep people deceived so that they will not know the one true God and the Messiah. Right. And that's why we do programs like this in order to awaken the world. Right, you know, the enemy is at work today. We know that, but God has given us the victory through his dear son. Mm. And that's why we bring you programs like this. And we have some upcoming programs that will teach even more about what's happening in the end times. Mm -hmm. So let's take a look at that now. So often you hear people say with resignation, oh, that's the signs of the times. Well, perhaps we're living in the times of the signs. You would think the rebirth of the nation Israel, which I, I do believe was when the world hourglass took its final spin. Yes. And I do believe that we are in the end times as that being one sign. Mm -hmm. But the thing that really makes it more clear, I think at this point, Miles, is that when you look at all the uh, prophecies that are to be forthcoming mm -hmm. in the last days, they're all converging right now. We're here outside of a major mosque in a major city to bring the warning about jihad, to call you to prayer, to call you to stand with Israel, with Western civilization, with the persecuted church around the world. This is that hour. We need to recognize where we are in time. People kind of have this sense already, a collective sense that something big's about to happen. Uh, but when we look at the, the Bible and what it says, when, uh, in the few places in the end times where it mentions the, the moon turning into blood, first of all, it's not even clear in those passages that it's talking about a lunar eclipse. It may be that this is a supernatural event, that God is making the moon turn to blood in that. So it may not be some natural occurrence, but a supernatural event. One of the things that environmentalism emphasizes holism. Now, in our minds, we think this is a good thing, right? Because it sounds good, we yes. hear it all the time. Yes. But when you start thinking about holism, what it means is uh, everything is mutually interdependent, including man, including God. Right. They're all placed under that right. holistic 
yeah. circle of life in the world that right. you can't get out of. Right. And that leads to uh, all kinds of relationships that are going to compromise you to prevent you from acting according to God's image that God made you. So the, the best way to control the masses as a limited, finite being is through um, a financial system that's number, numbering or computer oriented. And that means cash, you know, has to be uh, marginalized. It uh, is of big interest, of course, is how do the conditions come about that we see uh, depict in Revelation 13, 17, where it says no man can buy nor sell. How does that happen? Uh, the man of sin, uh, the wicked one, the son of perdition, won three of 27 names for the Antichrist. I believe he's alive and well on planet Earth. I believe he's about to appear at any moment in time. I call these days the last days of the last days. I believe that Jesus is coming soon. And if he's going to come in my lifetime, he better come pretty <laughs> quick. <laughs> God is now going to prepare us to be able to thrive in the midst of the difficult years ahead. And that's what this program will help you do. This series is going to equip you to thrive in the midst of difficult times. This is the time of the signs. You know, the Bible says that unless those days, the end times, the days in which we're living, unless they were shortened, even the elect would be deceived. Mm -hmm. Satan is a deceiver. He wants you to be going after some other gospel, such as radical Islam, some other way of living, right. such as looking for a physical solution for supernatural problems. He wants us to be deceived to keep us from the knowledge of the one true God. I love the way Dr. Lindsay's book goes into detail about mm -hmm. that, and it dovetails so amazingly with Times of the Signs, our program. We talk about the futility of the one world government, and yet man is trying to accomplish that. We speak about the extreme green movement right. and how that is a substitute where people are worshiping creation instead of worshiping the Creator. Mm -hmm. So many topics like that, these other Gospels that are coming in, and it's all about Satan trying to thwart the purposes of yeah, God Yeah, the and one the world earth. government mm. that is coming, yep. that we see was in the Tower of Babel. Right. I mean, they were the one world government, and God took care of them, and He will take care of the next one that's uh, coming together. Yeah. But until then, we need to be like Noah. You know, he was saved and his family mm. because he was a preacher of righteousness. Mm. And that is our call, to preach righteousness and to live a clean life. Wow. I think that only through the work of the cross, only through submission to the goodness of God, the mercy of God, right. recognizing our sinful nature, that we have this transforming work. And it really yes. ties into, I love the way Dr. Lindsay said, stay in the book. Mm -hmm. You know, we need to stay in the scriptures. We need to be reading the word, be people of worship and prayer, and be looking up because our redemption is coming. And so we don't get deceived. We like to follow the book, and that's why we tell you, Shalu, Shalom, Yerushalayim. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Our monthly newsletter, The Levitt Letter, is free and full of insightful articles and news commentary from a messianic perspective. Visit levitt.com to find our newsletter, along with current and past programs, our television schedule, and much more. Don't forget to order this week's resource by calling 1-800-WONDERS, or you can purchase it from our catalog at levitt.com. Your donations to Zola Levitt Ministries help these organizations bless Israel. Please remember, Zola Levitt Ministries depends on tax-deductible donations from viewers like you. This has been a paid program brought to you by Zola Levitt Ministries.